Yo, it is good, yo. It's your boy Todd back here with another video. And in this video today, we are going to be talking about the top 10 point guards right now in NBA 2K22, my team. So we'll be ranking them from 10 to 1. Now, this is going to be the primary point guard position. So, like the secondary point guards, such as like Donovan Mitchell, such as like James Harden, they're not going to be on this list. I will talk about where James Harden would be, though. So if you're interested, is James Harden the best point guard if that's what you want to consider him in the game? We'll be going over that as well. Now, before we dive any further into that, if you are new to my channel and have not yet, make sure to smash that subscribe button as we're on the road to 90,000 subscribers. At number 10, might be a surprise, Chris Paul. Here, here's what I'm talking about. When I say it might be a surprise to a lot of you guys, it's going to be, well, Ty, he's six feet tall. And you know what? You're right, guys. You're right. He is only six feet tall. But here's the thing with Chris Paul that I like. He's six feet tall, but he has an 82 strength rating, an 80 interior rating with a 75 buck, and great defensive badges, including Hall of Fame ball stripper. A lot of people might want to say, well, well, Ty, you hate Iverson. Well, they're way different players. CP3, 92 three ball, 95 driving, 97 two ball, 97 ball, 97 speed acceleration, 97 lateral quickness. Great tendencies animation wise, CP3 based on quick is really solid as well. Here's the deal, guys. If I used small point guards, which I don't, but if I did, Chris Paul would be one of the guys that I would consider using first and foremost. He can dunk, he can shoot the ball well, has really good defensive stats. He's a card, especially on current gen, that I want to start using more of. I think CP3 is really the man with the plan for point guards six feet tall or under. At number nine, we're going to plug in another kind of small point guard in Galaxy Opal, Steph Curry. I would not be surprised to see a dark matter Steph Curry at the end of this month. I would not be this surprised in the slightest. Maybe after next week in which we get the dark matter Kobe, don't be surprised to see Steph. 6'3", six, 6'3", three, six, three, wingspan, hot spots from ever outside the three-point line. 14 on favors, 38 on gold, 98, three ball, 70, driving like 93, speed with ball, 98 ball under 98, speed acceleration, 93 here, lateral quickness. Only a 66 interior, 69 strength rating, an awful, uh, terrible player build, terrible player model. Shooting badges are solid though. I mean, he's a guy that can light you up from the three point line, can definitely move really well in the half court setting. And he's one of those guys that I do not like really. I mean, I don't mind playing against Steph, but he can light me up. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, especially on current gen, Steph can light you up. I mean, it really comes down to the leaner in which it is the Steph Curry leaner. And which on current gen, that's a big deal because nobody else really, I mean, the normal leaner is not what it is on next gen. So with this Steph Curry leaner, it's definitely tough to defend. Coming in at number nine on my point guard list. Number eight, we're going to talk about one of the most overpriced cards in 2K in the Galaxy Opal job rank. Card is good. No way around that, but he's massively overpriced. 6367 wingspan hot spots from everywhere. 94 three ball, 95 driving, 96 field ball, 92 ball, 96 speed acceleration, 94 lateral quickness, Hall of Fame catch shoot, limitless mismatch, expert sniper. 10 Hall of Fame finishing badges, quick first step floor general, as well as Hall of Fame clips. Can't get rim protector, that's kind of a downside, but outside of that, I mean, the card's perfect. Shifty dribble style. I don't love the Paul George release on normal timing. If you love that release, especially uh, on your point guards, then you're going to like John ja Morant because really there's no flaws in the card. In tier 75 buck, 75 aren't horrible. They're usable stats, obviously. Still might get mashed that little bit. I like John ja Morant. I, I think in 2K, he's a very, very solid card. Hence why he comes in at number eight on this list. At number seven, we're going to plug in Derrick Rose. And it's sad in my opinion that he is this low. But that's how I think tall point guards are the meta, especially on next gen, current gen. I mean, you can get away with running them a little bit more. But Derrick Rose being at number seven isn't a Derrick Rose slander type of thing. It's not me slandering Derrick Rose because I don't mind the card. I, I think especially on the offensive end of the court, Derrick Rose is immaculate. He is very similar to John Morant though. The real only differences between the card is I like Derrick Rose release a little bit more and I like the quick dribble style as well as D Rose has obviously his size up which is super cheesy. Offensively, not a card you want to come up against because he can fry you like a piece of bacon. On the defensive end, however, I mean, he's going to struggle. That's that's as simple as I can put it. Definitely going to struggle on the defensive end of the court. 
Derrick Rose, still 98 speed acceleration, 95 lateral quickness. Can shoot the ball as a really solid release. Hall of Fame quick first step, incredible dribbling wise. If he was just a little bit taller, or if this card came out a little bit earlier before these taller point guards, he'd be a top three point guard in the game. Problem is, we just got way too many tall point guards in the game. And speaking of tall point guards, Ben Simmons coming in here at number six. Just goes to show how good the point guard position is right now. That James Harden is not even technically on this list. And that Ben Simmons is all the way down here at number six. 6'11 six point guard, 7 foot wingspan. Here's the problem with Ben Simmons. 62 three ball, no shooting badges. You can say, well, yeah, I can shoot with Ben Simmons. Well, maybe. But the problem is, okay, even if you can shoot with Ben Simmons, the dude doesn't move well at the point guard position. He doesn't get brick wall, doesn't get rim protector. If he got rim protector, I'd probably have him in my top five. It's, it's that simple. Rim protector is a super important badge. He can't apply badges to the card, so that's a kind of big downfall as well. Look, Ben Simmons, he's kind of a, a, a player that if he fits what you want, you can run the card. I just think as an all-around point guard, he's not quite good enough to be in my specific top five. If I have five point guards, my five point guards ahead of him are guys I personally would rather go to the 250K tournament with. Ben Simmons is not a card I'd be comfortable playing with for that amount of money. And I mean, majority of you guys, even in Unlimited, probably aren't going to have that much fun playing with Ben. Coming in at number five, still to this day, is Diamond Penny Hardaway. If you disagree with me, that is fine. That's why we do this, okay? I just want to talk about how Clamps is one of the most overrated badges in the game. Here's why. Penny gets Intimidator post lockdown rim and brick wall. You give him those badges? Look, I'm not worried about Sniper. I'm not worried about this. I can green with Penny, okay? Decent speed, decent ladder quickness, gonna compete on the defensive end of the court. If you add a couple Hall of Famers on this card, he is still top notch. The moment we get a Galaxy Opal, or heck, if 2K, by the grace of God, gives this card a Dark Matter, you're looking at by far and away the best point guard in the game. Don't be surprised if you see him in as the Dark Matter token reward. Don't be surprised. And if he's in there, I'm claiming him right away. It's probably going to be my starting point guard in 250K. That is how good and how elite this Diamond Penny Hardaway is and how elite I think Penny Hardaway is going to be later on in this year. I know his release isn't necessarily the best, but his dribble style, being quick, is super smooth his movement super solid defensively already pretty solid penny hardaway very solid in 2k crack in the top five number four we got pink diamond lamello ball 6 6 6 10 wingspan i just wish they made lamello 6 8 if he would be 6 8 be a little higher on the card release wise really smooth shooting wise really smooth playmaking wise really solid problem is his dribble style is not great defensively i really don't have any complaints about the card though he's just not great defensively. He's good defensively. He's just not great. I will say his defensive tendencies are something I love. Pass and reception tendency, great. On ball steal tendency, great. And I notice them. I notice them when I use Lamelo Ball. That's one of the reasons I like this card so much. I liked him for about a week until we got this newer point guard drop. But if you still love Lamelo Ball, I'm all here for it. I'm all ears listening to how good Lamelo Ball is. At number three, not even cracking my top two is Dark Matter Gary Payne. Now, I'm sure there's going to be one of two collector levels in my comments like, oh, Ty, you don't you don't know how good Gary is. Uh, well, I collected all these cards and spent all this money for Gary. He's a top point guard of the game. You're right. He is one of the top point guards in the game. He's just not top two. It's, it's just honestly that simple. Splash collected this card and he doesn't even use him. I mean, 94 three ball, 80 driving dunk, 96 field ball, 95 ball, 96 speed acceleration, 99 ladder quickness, great interior. There's one problem with the card jump shot 40 on normal time if they would have given him a uh, jump shot 40 on quick he might be the best point guard still in this game problem is it's on normal timing it's super hard to get off great defensively but again we've got great defensive point guards like is he a better defender than lonzo ball i'll let you guys debate that all i'm gonna say is both of them are really good defenders i love the pink diamond gary and if you wanted to put pink diamond gary on this list you could I just don't think there's that many people using him anymore. Tendency wise, great. Animation wise, great. He's going to sit on the opposing point guard. Problem is, he's just really not ultimately worth what, what he's ultimately not worth the grind. And I'm not super high on him. This is a spot for Jalen Rose as well as James Harden. They're at my number two. Jalen Rose, James Harden, they're at my number two. Put them side by side. Jalen Rose, 6'8", 7 foot wingspan, hot spots for him, 45 plays around the arc, 88 speed, 85 driving duck, 88 speed ball, 86 ball handle, 88 speed acceleration, 87 lateral quickness. 
I just, I would say this. I have Monty Williams. This is the way my Jalen Rose looks like. I feel like his lateral quickness needs an update, and you need to give him a speed shoe as well. You give him those two things, defensively, he's going to make him a lot better. Still, his acceleration might not be where I want it. The defensively, just doesn't feel great. I think that's the best way to phrase it is defensively, he's just mediocre. It's the best way I can phrase it. No brick wall. Obviously, defensively, pretty solid all the way around. Shooting-wise, you give him Chef Limitless Sniper, going to be pretty solid. Jump shot 32, a good enough release, just not super quick. Quick dribble style is nice. The only problem I have with Jalen Rose is I just wish he felt a little better on the defense end of the court. Offensively, at 6'8", definitely is one of the best there is. The top point guard in NBA 2K22, my team right now, is Lonzo Ball. And you guys can hate me for, for putting Lonzo. You guys can think I'm biased. He is by far and away my favorite point guard in the game. 93 ball, 90 driving, 92 speed ball, 94 ball, handle, 92 speed acceleration, 93 lateral quickness. You throw Monty Williams on this card, look, man, what more do you want? 98 perimeter, 97 speed, 93 lateral quickness. Here's what I'll say. I want Alonzo with ankle braces, chase down, intimidator, pick dodger, all of these things, and then you're looking at the best point guard in the game if you get those on Hall of Fame. Even on gold, really solid all the way around. You gotta give him rim protector, but that's really the only defensive bad rim protector. Maybe post lockdown for current gen brick wall if you're next gen. Then you look at offense. You no, know, you give him chef, maybe limitless hot zone hunter. The dude is really complete all the way around. I love Lonzo. Good tendencies, really good release, shifty dribble style. By far the way, my top point guard in NBA 2K22. My team. I don't know your thoughts down below in the comments. Who is I too high on? Who is I too low on? Do you guys think Chris Paul is a top 10 point guard of the game? Or would you guys prefer if I would have went a different route? Maybe you guys like Jeremy Lin. Heck, maybe you guys even like a card like Magic Johnson. Because Magic Johnson, in my opinion, could have deserved a spot. I just, I, I I don't like how Magic really moves. But Magic probably objectively is better than, you know, the, the top, uh, you know, the 10 through 8 range that I have. So if there's one guy that I personally think should have been on the list, maybe it's Magic Johnson. But he just didn't catch my eye when I did make the list. It's gonna wrap it up though, guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you are new. And as always, man, I love you guys. Have a blessed day.